So your question pretty much leads me down a really deep rabbit hole. <laughs> I'm not going to be so bold to stand up here and tell you that neonics isn't affecting the bees because maybe it is, maybe it isn't, I don't know. Uh, as farmers, we use these technologies to be able to keep ourselves in business. If it wasn't for those seed treatments, we'd be spraying our crops to be controlling the same problems. So whether or not that problem's underground where we can somewhat manage it as beekeepers, or if we broadcast it across the countryside in sprayers every time they go across with the herbicide and blanket everything, like our bees can't get away from that, right? So I'm, I kind of look at the issue as it's a situation that has developed over the last, this farming situation has developed over the last 80 years, let's say, and it's not gonna change tomorrow. No matter how much attention we put towards it, it's gonna take a long time to change out of this whole situation we put ourselves into. Maybe it won't change, I don't know. But as a beekeeper, I need, I need to be able to address the problem right now right now right so I'm, I'm focusing on nutrition this is why I'm putting so much attention and trying to educate farmers that we need flowers we need our hive to be better, better nourished we need this pollen coming in we need that food for our hives to survive I'm also uh, providing my hives with nutrition through patties and supplement so that I'm trying to promote a healthier nest a healthier bee I'm controlling the d diseases in my colonies I'm doing everything I can as a beekeeper try to promote a healthier bee to maybe be able to handle all these influences out there. If we take neonic seed treatments off the market next year, <clears throat> we might not see any difference in our hive health further down the line because there's a whole other ball of problems there we got to take care of. So instead of just focusing on one problem of that big ball of problems, I, I feel it's more proactive to focus on more of those problems and try to fix those. And then maybe as we go, as maybe as society progresses and, and we can adopt new technologies to get away from these other harmful technologies, but maybe hurting our bees or the environment, you know, maybe we'll just naturally progress our way out of that. So does that answer your question? Like as a farmer, I have a bottom line to maintain. You see machinery across the countryside, brand new paint, looks like we're made a lot of money. We're being controlled. We have margins like that, razor thin. We can't afford to not bring a crop in. We can't afford not to adapt to adopt the technologies to be able to grow these crops. We gotta stay in business. I can, I can be righteous all I want as a person to sustain the environment, but I'll be out of business. I'll be doing it with a, a desk job, right? Not as a farmer. So as a farmer, I gotta protect my livelihood and I gotta make sure we stay solvent. There's no question around that. But as a beekeeper seeing all this, you know, maybe we can influence other we can influence farmers and how they farm. Maybe they can farm better. We can promote research, like these guys were talking last night or this morning, this terrific research. We need more investment into that. And maybe this is a place where society, if they give a damn, they can maybe invest some of our money into providing more research to help us out. Or maybe maybe not even money, but just attention towards our cause, because we, we're directly linked to the environment. And they're, ultimately, we want a healthier environment. So let's help Let's help make this a healthier environment, right? So it's, so I think I just wandered down that rabbit hole. <laughs> so I hope that answered your question. <laughs>